and welcome to Dawn's Craft Riot. It's March. It's March. It's 2016. It's March. It's like spring where I live. It's uh, sunny and we've had some rain and the snow is all melty. Oh, I'm sorry Vince is having troubles getting logged in. Hopefully that will clear up shortly. Cross our fingers. They should have saved me some, I don't know, uh, I was going to say bandwidth, but I think that's the wrong thing. But I haven't, I haven't been here for two weeks, so they should have lots of room for us. They should have lots of spaces for us to get signed in. Oh, it took some of you three times to get logged in. I'm sorry. Seriously, if I knew how to fix technical difficulties, my camera wouldn't be blurry all the time. And you wouldn't have to sign in three times to get in. <laughs> all right. So anyway, I'm just going to keep on going and hopefully folks will be able to sign in in the meantime. I'm advertising cookies. I'm not intending to. It's spring madness. It is spring madness because I feel like cleaning and organizing. So, um... I came across this box and I thought, well, that would be really handy for organizing something. What should I put in it? And I've decided that since it is the exact right size to fit my ribbons from the dollar store, it's nearly spring, but it's been almost a month here that the creek in the ravine behind the house that only runs in spring has been running. So at least in my neck of the woods, it wants to be spring. <laughs> So um, these dollar store ribbons fit really well, like the ribbon box part fits really well inside of this, this weird cookie box that we got with pre, we, we bought these cookies because they were on a very good sale and they were individually packed two per box. So that's a bit weird. We don't normally have our cookies individually wrapped. Um, so I don't have any other boxes like this, but this box is really neat. It fits these ribbon containers really well. So I decided what I would do is make this box into a ribbon organizer. Do you blame the March hairs? I'm trying to think, should I know what a March hare does? Are they just crazy? Oh, biscuits, <laughs> cookies. <laughs> We have different cookies here. All right, so as you can see, I can easily put my ribbons in there. The, the containers fit really well and they can still turn. So I thought, let's just make this into a really simple ribbon organizer. I've got these ribbons. I had them in this tub that I got at my dollar store, but I can't see into them. When they're up on the shelf, I just see, let's see what I see. I see the side of the box. Yeah, that helps. So I don't even know what's in here. Oh, March hairs are crazy. I get you. Because it's March. Let's go crazy. The sunshine has got me in a tizzy. <laughs> so I want to use these. Now, the ones I'm going to put in here are, are seasonal. I want to use them. And I never remember that I have them over the time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make all the ends stick out of the box and then we'll see them. If everyone gets what I'm getting at here, we'll have this box will be all covered. We won't even know that I'm advertising for a certain brand cookies or biscuits. <laughs> but what I will see is the ribbon sticking out. So I'll remember that I have it. All right. So now I've got my explanation about who, what I'm doing. You don't understand North American English because you're insular. Okay. <laughs> I don't believe that. I don't even, I don't even believe that. I don't know that we have hairs around here. Anyways, guys, let's just get right down to it. I, uh, I wanted this to be a quick and easy one and I think it will be because I'm just going to use some paint and paper we're going to cut into this box, but I'm not even going to take the 
oh, I'm not even going to say, I'm not even going to go say what you're talking about in the chat. My goodness, it seems like it's taken a turn. Um, but I'm not going to take this box apart. I could take this box apart, but because it fits my three rolls really well and it, it fits everything perfectly, I'm going to leave it as is. If you don't have a box like this, you could, um, you could take cardboard and make a tube out of it if you wanted to, like a, a square tube. Um, so I'm just going to get started. I'm not going to open up the other end, although I could. I'm going to use black paint. I'm just using craft paint, so I'm making a mess, getting little bits of craft paint. <laughs> Let me just clean off the top of my craft paint so it's not quite so gross. Okay, so let's get some paint out. I'm going to use paper, but I'm not going to cover the whole thing in paper because I don't want to have to worry about going over folds or whatever. Tube. It's totally tubular. I'm using a dollar store brush because I know I don't mind how this looks and it's light paint so it'll move it around. So I'm just going to paint the ends of this box. I might have to do a couple coats because it's glossy. The ends and then around each side. I'm going to use the black as sort of a matting. I don't want it too heavy because I want it to dry up quite quickly. <laughs> Ignore you, you're being cheeky. All right. That's the start of one bottom. Anyway, we'll have to repaint that because I can see uh, lots of lines. We could repaint it or we might just go over this end with some more paper. I'm going to use paper from a kit that I have a lot of, yeah, that I have, it's a, from a pad that I have two of the same pad. So I still haven't figured out what I'm going to do uh, YouTube wise exactly, but I think that we're just going to keep on streaming our live streams on you stream for now. Because there are some things with the YouTube version of Lime live stream, live streaming that I don't, it doesn't exactly fit our purposes. This is just regular craft paint, craft black, it's crafters acrylic, black, deco art, just regular black. Is it <laughs> chimney black? I don't know what they use for blacking chimneys. I am also going to do these tabs at the end because I'm going to re I'm actually going to leave the tabs as resealable tabs because then when I use up my ribbon, I can just open it up and put another roll in and because I get a lot of my ribbon at the dollar store. I assume that they'll probably fit in here size wise. Anywhere where it's really glossy, it's wanting to give me a, some lines. It's because I didn't prepare this box in any way ahead of time, which you could, could very easily do. <laughs> but you know me, I like to, you know, have something to do. It's black noir. Yeah, that's, that's the kind of black it is. Noir. <laughs> oh dear. If you did make a tube out of cardboard instead of just using a box that you already had on hand, you might want to, or what you would want to do is cut a, a square that would fit in the end with another inch all the way around and then cut into those corners and bend that inch inside. I don't know if I'm saying that in a way that makes you understand what I mean. <laughs> perhaps you, perhaps you understand what I mean and perhaps I've just made everything even more confusing. 
Just use a box if you have one. And don't forget that if you try and paint over partially dried acrylic paint with other acrylic paint, you will lift up the original coat of acrylic paint. So let it dry. Okay, so let's heat this up and give it a second coat. Because that's what everybody loves to watch, me painting. It does have a lovely gloss, but that's about to leave. So I do have my hand up inside of here, but not right up really close to where I'm drying it. Please don't burn your hands. Try and go in order of the sides that I... So the sides I painted first. And we'll just go back over it and give it another shot. I think we can set it down on that bottom now. It's got a little bit of paint on it, on the old hands and arms. We're, almo we're almost there. We just have to paint it, have, give it a coat of paper, and also cut a slit in it, and we're all set. Oh, that side's not quite dry enough to lay it down on. You don't have to paint it either. Like I say, you could go all paper if you wanted. Almost there. We're almost at the ready for the second coat stage. Alright. Ooh, soup. Yum yum. Okay, let's just give this a second coat very quickly. If I can see that I've painted with like streaks, I'm going to try and go across that the other direction. And I need more paint. I think I can set it down like so. Country vegetable soup with potato chips. <laughs> I know you don't call them potato chips there. <laughs> with crisps. Very nice. I'm sorry that Vince couldn't get into the chat. Maybe next time. We'll get this double coated. And then we'll start cutting out some paper. I don't know what we're having for supper. I have not thought that far ahead. I missed this edge somehow. I'm painting these edges really thick. I was planning on bringing the paper quite a bit out to the edge. So, oh, when his computer is about to die. Oh, that happens. That happens. painting tells me, hey, your arm is tired. I didn't realize it, but my arm is tired. 
Okay, so now we just have to do these top flaps. It goes through computers like there's no tomorrow. I guess if you do a lot of work on computers, really eat up those batteries. It's a little bit hard to paint these flaps while it's open like this. I wouldn't necessarily recommend it. You might want to do this in stages if you are doing this exactly the same way I am. If you're doing this exactly the same way I am, I recommend doing it differently. <laughs> flap is covered. I just don't want any glaring, bright, glossy yellow shining out at us. Not that there's a problem with that, but that's just not the color I'm picking for this particular piece today. All right, last flap, and then we can get this drying while we cut some paper. All right, put that into the paint water and not your glass. Okay, guys. Oh, and he's got a magnetic field. Yeah, that, some people have a weird thing where they just are no good around electronics, or the electronics are no good around them, I should say. Once we get this bottom dried, I can set it on the bottom on a non-stick piece of parchment or something, and the rest of it can dry while we cut some paper. All right, so let's just measure very quickly before we send this away. What size do we want our paper? So that's four inches. By seven and, it's hard to say because I'm not touching it all the way down, but seven and a quarter or an eighth. And then the side pieces are three and a quarter. And again, that's going to be seven and an eighth. All right. It's art. He's cursed. You know, some people have a lot of electricity going on in their bodies. All right, so let's find paper. I already picked this paper. This is from one of these color books that I got at the Dollarama. I can't, I can't see that. I have more than one of these books, so I thought this is the kind of paper I should go for. Some that I have more than one version of. So I figured the black and white and gray, well, I guess that's white and two kinds of gray, would be good. Might want to go with this one. I don't want anything that's going to really take away from the ribbon that's sticking out. So that's why I'm going for the sort of white, gray, monochrome kind of situation. Just take this off of here so it fits into my trimmer without any hassle. Save that for some other project. And I'll do that with this as well. So I think I want to leave the black as a mat around. And so I said it was seven and the one was by four. I guess I can always measure it again. So, so I think I'll cut it down to, oh yeah, you can't see really any part of my trimmer. Oh, this is handy. I'll cut it down to six and a half. You can sort of see where that line is. Oh. And then we'll go by, we'll go by and measure again. How about if we measure again? Well, it makes it more difficult when the crap, when the pound shops sell craft supplies, but also then you can get some craft supplies for good. Like that paper, there's no 
no point in not buying it. Sometimes with different adhesives and things, you might decide, yeah, it is four, so let's go three and a half. Um, different adhesives, you might not want to buy them. Three and a half. Actually, let's cut this to seven and then cut it in half again. You have to know what you what what is good to buy at the dollar store and what is not good to buy at the dollar store. Sometimes you buy something and you go, oh, this is one of those things that you really just shouldn't bother buying at the dollar store. All right, so is this going to work? Oh, that's totally going to fit on there once we dry it. If we don't dry it, we'll get gouges like that. All right, now I've got wet paint on my finger. Let's get that off of there before I transfer it. Okay, so that's the two, two lengths. We also need the two shorter sides, which again we're going to do at six and a half. Oh no, we can't do it at six and a half because I've already cut that down that way. Let's see. Let's go three. And then cut that down to, I think that is six and a half. Yeah. Oh, I'm using the wrong paper. I'm a genius. We can go six and a half because I used the wrong paper. You don't have to measure to do this. You just need to find what size you need. All right, so these are four. Oh, those ones are three and a half. So these ones should probably be three. Let's go to three. Try not to smack this into anything. Oh yeah, that'll work fine on the sides. Okay, so we're fine for sides. Oh, I see that fab has popped out. Oh, you stream. You're okay. I'm going to dry this now. Oh, and I want to say hello to anybody who is watching on the video replay, by the way. Hello to those watching in chat live and to those watching on the video replay. I really appreciate you checking this out. I know so far it looks pretty weird, like a box with a bit of black paint on it, but I think it'll make a nice holder very shortly. To make sure I get this really dry this time. You might want to, if you are doing this, paint it and let it dry really well before you move on to the next step. And also be careful with your heat tool or you'll end up blistering it like I did. Uh, where is it? Right there. Hold it way, way, way up. And remember that this is acrylic paint. It does not want to be heated up. I'm holding it way far away from it. Okay, I think we're good to move on to the next step. All right, so my next step is to cut the slit for the ribbon to show through because I do want to have a little bit of ribbon sticking out so that I can know which ribbon is available to me. So I'm going to just close this up and hope that it's not too wet paint wise. So it's a little bit tricky. I want you to be very careful if you're doing this. I'm just going to put a little mark on one end and a little mark on the other end. And then I'm going to line up my marks. Now I happen to have a little gap in my 
ruler that will help me do this, but you could just draw some lines. You might want to use a ruler for this part just to get the lines sort of straight. I just want two lines running parallel to each other. And then I'm going to take a craft knife. Now I'm doing this really carefully because I've still got this in the form of a box. So I'm just going to, I'm not even going to try and poke all the way through. I'm just going to very carefully score over and over on the same line until my blade goes in. And I'm going to do that on this side too. I don't know if you can see that. I've just scored over and over on my little tiny line until the blade went through. So I'm going to do that here as well. This is the end where it's not as tightly, where, where it's not glued to the bottom. So watch your fingers. Don't try and push really hard. I know you can put this straight through the box, but just very carefully make your line. And then do the same thing going this way. You might want to use your ruler. Just to give you a guideline of where to drag your craft knife. And I'm not putting really any pressure. Just very gently pulling it until I come to that line that I already created. Really carefully. Very gently. Until you've gone all the way through. And then you do it the other side as well. Because we're just making a little slit in the box for the ribbon to stick out of. And again. Just very gently. You're not trying to put this through the box at this point. You're just scoring. This is trying to bend down on me. So I'm just taking my ruler away because I can, I've already scored the line in a little bit. So you can just Follow your line. Please be careful. Respect your tools. Score that line until you get it through the cardboard. There we go. Now you could have done this before you painted it, then you could paint the edges. I didn't think to do it before I painted it, so now I've got loose edges. You can tidy that up with a scissor if you want to. You cut it out with a scissor if you want to, or if you're better with scissors. You could undo the box all the way and cut the slit in the open box. Whatever makes you more comfortable, please do not cut yourselves. Do not. Repeat, do not cut yourselves. I'm just going to come in with a tiny bit more of the black paint. really goopy watery mess of black paint off of there because I don't want goopy watery black paint. I just want to tidy up my edges here. Right. And we'll let that side dry while we'll work on the other sides. We're almost done now because all we have to do is stick down our paper and put our ribbon inside really. Oh, pop that back into the tub of water. So I'm going to use tape. I'm going to use tape to stick down our, our ends because it won't buckle my paper. And who wants buckled paper?
I like this idea because I can swap out the ribbon for other ribbon, but I can still see what it is in there. So I'll, I'll use it more, I think. I'm using miracle tape. Use whatever. Use any double sided tape or glue if you preferred. Hello! You managed to get it to recognize you and let you in. How exciting. right at the critical moment of this project. <laughs> You're in! You're here! I can see you! Woo! <laughs> Indeed. You are here just in time to see the biscuits disappear. Could say that to just about anybody at any time in my life. See, here are the cookies, here are no cookies. <laughs> you had to create a new account. Oh, I see. Yeah, that's not even the right, that's not even your normal name. What? <laughs> How strange. This is paper white paper, so I've managed to crinkle it rather a lot, but I think we'll all get the we'll all get the picture. It'll be fine. This is like a temporary storage storage solution for me that I think is gonna work really well. All right, so let's flip it this side, put on this guy. I'm gonna use the tape runner on this side because it might even go faster. Oh, I'm sorry. You've been watching it shape up as you've been trying to get in. I love technology, but sometimes it's very frustrating. Mm -hmm. Two sides down and this tape runner is working great. Two sides down. We are almost there. I think I can set it on this painted edge. Almost there. In fact, I think I put the tape on both of these at once. So either we can learn how to be efficient or we can learn the pitfalls of taping both things at once. <laughs> One or the other will learn something one way or another we're gonna learn something that's paint that right there is paint so that's what you get when the thing you're painting is being held on your hand like a puppet there we go i know it's messy it's almost unbelievable. Oh yes, the old computer needs to be tossed through the window routine. I know it well. All right, hopefully for the room. So I'm actually sliding that up into the hole I created, which means it's too big, but that's okay because I can open it up and tuck it inside. Oh my goodness. That's pretty exciting. Shh. Exciting, quiet, secret news. So I'm reaching inside and I'm bending this little piece down. Look in there. See, I'm bending it down. There is a uh, tape on it. So it should tape it down. Actually, that should create a little bit better of a 
edge for the ribbon to run along. Let the ribbon run. All right, so now this is the box. This is my ribbon organizer. Let's put ribbon in it. Let's put the ribbon in it. And I'm going to make sure the ribbon's all coming out the same direction. <laughs> yes, that'll work. <laughs> now you get to watch me try and be coordinated. There we go. There's ribbon coming out the side. You can't see because the flap's in the way. Make sure it's lined up with itself. Perfect. And now I'm putting in the, that's hearts. The next one is going to be spider webs. Now you may want to wait until you're absolutely certain that all of your paint is dry. But I just want to show you guys how this works. With purple paper, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, you could really decorate this and then only put, say, like Christmas, Christmas things in or only Halloween things. Or, yeah, you could really uh, alter this style of organizer to match the kinds of ribbons. Of course, I've knocked that one down like a genius. All right, guys, there we go. Ha! <laughs> it only took a bit of finagling and then you can just get your ribbon out. Of course, now we have to tuck that ribbon back in. <laughs> but see, Voila! <laughs> that way I can see what I've got going on and I can use my ribbon. I can also stack it up one on top of each other instead of having this tub that I can't stack anything on top of that I can't see in from the side. So that is it. Easy peasy ribbon holder made out of a box that used to have cookies in it. Now I've got some black smudge on there because I didn't wait for my paint to dry like I advised you to do. <laughs> but there you go, folks. That's it. That is it for today. I'm just feeling so ready to organize. <laughs> so who knows if I can find some more cardboard, uh, cardboard that'll make another one the same size or maybe a bigger one. I, I might be off to make some more of these because I do have a whole thing of Christmas ribbon I'd like to organize. So yeah. Have fun organizing your stuff, if that's what you're doing. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you so much for being here, and thank you for watching on the replay. I hope to be back next Saturday. Um, I can't see my calendar from here. Uh, I don't know. Is it the... I don't know what the date is. I think it might be the 11th on Saturday. You could make different color boxes for different color ribbons and coordinate them. Exactly. You can really, there's, there's a lot of variations for, with this particular product, project. You could go all kinds of crazy. <sighs> she, she pauses and thinks about how crazy she can go. No, no, I think we're good. We're good to start with this. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for being here. I hope your March is all peaches and cream. I'll see you hopefully next week. If not, the week after that. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Thank you so much.